Now that you've introduced quantum mechanics to your students, the next step is to introduce them to the Duwop board. The Duwop board is a teaching manipulative that's been designed to help students visualize the actual positions of the electrons and atoms. The Duwop board that you have in your set is made from the cover of the manipulative booklet. We've taken one here and laid it flat on our table. The first thing you'll need to do is orient your students to the Duwop board. At the bottom of the Duwop board is the term nucleus, and then above that you'll see a series of circles representing possible locations for electrons. Have your students orient their Duwop board with the nucleus towards them. Up the left hand side you'll see a set of notations. The whole numbers out front, the 1, 2's, 3's, 4's, and 5's, represents the level, level or layer of the electrons. Now recall that this was the principal quantum number that was introduced earlier. We said that the electrons can be found in up to seven layers uh, surrounding the nucleus of the atom. And if you refer back to your periodic table where we wrote the numbers 1 through 7, down the left side of the periodic table to indicate which layers of electrons were being filled for the various elements uh, in that series of elements. So up the left hand side of our periodic table we have first of all the layer numbers. Now note that the Duwop board does not uh, is not a complete representation of, of all the elements. It would extend further up and we do have a diagram of that available uh, on our website if you'd like to see uh, the complete uh, representation uh, for all the elements on the periodic table. Now next to the uh, principal quantum number we have these uh, letters lowercase s's, p's, d's, and if the board continued we'd have f's. And if you recall that's the shape of the orbit uh, that those electrons are following. So recall that s stood for spherical. We used a ball uh, in our previous video, P was pair, recall that we used light bulbs, uh, D was the dumbbell shape, and then the F was the pretend uh, fish, fish shape. Okay. Uh, notice also on your board there's an arrow over on the right hand side that says increasing energy. And what that indicates is that as you move outward from the nucleus of the atom through the layers, as you move away the electrons themselves carry uh, have greater amounts of energy uh, within them. So uh, electrons at a high level uh, will have more energy than uh, electrons closer to the nucleus of the atom. The uh, next thing you'll need to do is uh, tell your students that there's a particular manner uh, in which the electrons fill uh, these layers. And what we like to do is pretend that the students, or have them pretend that uh, they have their do up board in the bathtub with them and they have it in front of them. And as the water fills in the bathtub and begins to cover the do up board, that's how the electrons fill also. So this first circle down here represents the first location that electrons will be filling in, in this one. Uh, 1s position here and then as you have more electrons they will move to the next and then note that this series here on the 2p level uh, the xyz uh, are, would be the next layers that would fill and then you just follow right on up the board as you go. Uh, let's look at this xyz notation if you recall uh, that the pear shaped orbits uh, which was we, when we introduced the magnetic quantum number, uh, we talked about how those pear-shaped orbits can be in three different orientations in space. Uh, we used the light bulbs and we showed an X and then a Y and a Z orientation of those. And that's what the X, Y, and Z orientation uh, notations represent right here. So, in essence, what we have is the nucleus of the atom, and then this was the circles here represent potential locations for the electrons. And uh, the theory says, you know, that these electrons are moving around very quickly, uh, creating a cloud 
of electrons around the nucleus and the doo-wop board just freezes those temporarily in, in place so that we can study them better. Uh, next what you'll do is uh, uh, have your students uh, gather their doo-wops. Now uh, we've got some plastic pieces here that we're going to use and we've got two colors and what you can do is ask your students why do you think we've got two colors uh, for electrons here and hopefully uh, your students will r recall the spin quantum number uh, where we talked about how the electrons travel with a partner one spinning clockwise and one spinning counterclockwise so we're using the two colors here to represent that uh, clockwise and counterclockwise spin indicating which is which is, is irrelevant but uh, just to point out that we've got uh, uh, the two spins for the electrons and that they will travel in, in partners Okay, so uh, now that we've kind of oriented ourselves uh, to the board, let's go ahead and practice using the board. So the first thing we'll do is let's uh, find an element on the periodic table, and let's just choose uh, beryllium, which is atomic number four, symbol BE, beryllium, uh, number four. And so the atomic number four tells us that we will have four protons, four neutrons, and then four electrons. And it's the electrons that we're most interested in right now. So we'll get us four electrons. And we're going to get two red ones, and then we're going to get two yellow ones for a total of four electrons. Now recall like we said that the doo-wop board fills from the nearest the nucleus and outward, just like the water would fill in the bathtub. And so what we'll do is we'll take one doo-wop of one color and start here in this 1s position and then a second one and we have two more so we'll then we'll move up to the next one and we'll put the second doo-wop or second electron uh, in that second uh, position there now this completes the filling of the doo-wop board but the more important thing we can do now is read what the board has, t has revealed to us we can say in an atom if we refer back to our chart now, an atom of beryllium, which has four total electrons, we can find two electrons on the first level traveling in a spherical shaped path, and then on the second layer we can find two more electrons also traveling in a spherical shaped path. Reading the board here is very important to show your students because it becomes the next step, uh, the step uh, that you'll use next when you begin to introduce uh, writing the various notations uh, for electron arrangements. So this would be uh, the means that you would use to fill your doo-wop board for the element beryllium. Let's do another one here. Let's take these off and let's refer back to our chart and let's let's go to our element we've used many times now carbon carbon is atomic number six and so we'll go to our doo-wops here and because it's atomic number six we'll get six total so we'll get three three of the red and then we'll get three three of the yellow and we'll go to our board and just like the water filling from the bottom up we'll start here with a yellow and a red in the bottom and we'll go to the next layer up and we'll do the same now we come to the 2p level which has these different orientations in space the x y and z and there's a rule that's called the Halstead rule and what it says is that one electron will fill in each orientation the X, Y, or Z, and then come back and put the second in the X, Y, or Z. So with our example of carbon here, one electron will go in the X orientation, one will go in the Y orientation. Now if we had done an element, say, uh, like oxygen, which would be number eight, we would have one, two, three, four, then we'd have five, six, we'd put one in the Z, and then come back then and put another one in the X orientation for the eighth electron. But this is carbon. We'll do one that's a little higher in atomic number here in just a moment. Let's read our board now. We can say in an element of carbon, 
we have a total of six electrons. On the first layer or first energy level, we've got two electrons traveling in a spherical shaped path. On the second layer, we have two electrons also traveling in a spherical shaped path. Within the second layer, we will have two electrons traveling in pear shaped orbits. We've got one electron traveling in the X orientation, we've got one traveling in the Y orientation, and then none in the Z. So this represents our arrangement of electrons in an atom of carbon. Let's look at another example now. Let's empty our board. We'll take off our electrons here. And let's go, let's look at, uh, let's say, sodium. Okay, sodium, which is uh, uh, atomic number 11. So we'll go back to our, our electrons now. Uh, it, we've got an odd number, atomic number this time, 11, and it doesn't really matter if we use 5 yellow and 6 red or 6 and 5. So I'm just going to go ahead and we're, I've got, uh, let's see, 3, we'll go 5, 6 yellow here, and then we'll get 5 of these, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 of the red ones there. So we'll begin filling at the bottom, so we'll start here with two on the first layer and then we'll have two on this 2s spherical shape now we come to the two p's and we call we said this was our Halstead rule so we're going to put one in the x and one in the y and then one in the z and it doesn't really matter which color or which uh, spin you put first. Just note that you go one, two, and three. So, so far we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, we're going to come back. Eight, nine, and here's our tenth electron. And we've got one left, so we're going to move up again to the third layer and have one electron uh, there on the third third level. So let's read our Dewatt board. Uh, this was the element sodium. So we say in an, in an atom of the element sodium, we have a total of 11 electrons. On the first layer, we have two electrons traveling in a spherical shaped path. On the second layer, we have two electrons traveling also in a spherical shaped path. Within the second layer, we also have electrons traveling in pear shaped orbits. We have two traveling in the X orientation, two in the Y, and then two in the Z orientation. Finally, we have one electron on the third level. It's traveling in a spherical shaped path. Now, you note that we've gone from the first layer to the second layer, here to the third layer. And then if you refer your students back to the periodic table, you can see that sodium indeed is on the is filled up you know within three layers of electrons we had our one two three four five six seven sodium uh, fills the third is filling electrons on the third level there okay let's look at one more example here let's empty our board here let's take a look let's do one a little farther up why don't we do, uh, how about argon here? Argon, atomic number 18. Atomic number is 18, that means we've got 18 protons, 18 neutrons, 18 electrons. And so we should get nine of each color then. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine okay and then we'll get one two three four five six seven eight nine and the other spin and once again we'll fill from the bottom up so we'll take two put them on the bottom layer there and I put them on top there okay there's one two in the 2s position uh, we'll follow the Halstead rule, so we'll go one in the X, one in the Y, one in the Z, 
and then we'll come back with X, Y, and Z. Okay, uh, let's continue. We move to the third layer. Okay, let me see. Let's see. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're at eleven. So this makes twelve total electrons. Okay, now we're moving up to the 3P level. This means we're on the third level, and the shape that the electrons are, uh, or the pathway is pear shaped. And again, you see we have the XYZ. And so what we'll do is we'll follow the Halstead rule again. So there's X, and there's one in the Y, one in the Z, and then we come back and put the second electron in the X, and in the Y, and in the Z. Alrighty, so now we've used up all, all of our uh, electrons here, and so let's read our doo-wop board. This was an atom of argon, which has a total of 18 electrons. We can say on the first layer there are two electrons traveling in the ball-shaped, spherical-shaped path. On the second layer, there's two electrons also traveling in a spherical-shaped path. Within the second layer, we also have six electrons traveling in pear-shaped paths, two in the X orientation, two in the Y, and then two in the Z. We move up to the third layer. We've got two electrons traveling in a spherical-shaped path. Also within the third layer, we have finally six electrons traveling in pear-shaped orbits. We have two going in the X orientation, we've got two going in the Y orientation, and then we have two going in the Z orientation. So with the doo-wop board, your students can visualize what the theory says about the arrangement of electrons in atoms. Now the next step, what we'll do is we'll go uh, take the information off the doo-wop board and learn to write our notations with it. And then from that point, we'll be able to examine similarities in the notations and then by uh, referring back to our periodic table, we'll begin to find some trends and, and uh, interesting uh, facts which allow us to understand why the elements are grouped the way they are into families and periods on the periodic table.